Mr. Chancellor, as public orator, I present uh, Dr. Richard Henderson as a candidate for an honorary degree. Richard Henderson was born in Edinburgh and lived for most of his youth in a village of Newcastleton in the Scottish borders. He graduated in physics at the University of Edinburgh, but he wanted to move to another university uh, to do his PhD. One Saturday morning, Richard went to an open day at the world-famous Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge. He found that even though it was a Saturday, everybody seemed to be working. Many people would be put off by this dedication, but it was quite the reverse with Richard. He decided to go to the LMB to do his PhD. At the start of his research, his supervisor, David Blow, suggested that he should go to the library and read about his topic for a month so that he could design his own PhD project. After a few hours in the library on the first day, Richard fell asleep. So it soon became apparent to Richard and David that he needed to work on a practical problem. Richard worked on an extremely hot topic for his PhD, the determination of the structure of the enzyme of alpha chymotrypsin and the effect of inhibitors on the enzyme. At this time, this was only the third protein structure to be determined by X-ray crystallography. Richard went on to Yale as a postdoc, where under the influence of Ray Wang, he got interested in purple membrane protein, a very stable transmembrane protein which was ideal for structural work. The structure and, and activity of bacterial rhodopsin would be the topic which would occupy Richard for 25 years. On returning to Cambridge, Richard con continued his work on bacterial rhodopsin with Nigel Unwin, and in 1975 they published together in the journal Nature a low resolution structure of bacterial rhodopsin using the technique of electron crystallography. This was a landmark paper as it demonstrated that EM could be used to determine the structure of proteins that could not be solved by X-ray crystallography. Richard spent the next 15 years improving this result, extending the resolution of the method so that an atomic level model could be obtained. As part of this research, Richard paid a visit to the laboratory of Dubouchet in Heidelberg. Work was being carried out on sample preparation. It was found that the answer was rapid cooling of the protein sample to form a thin film of water so that the water solidifies or vitrifies in its liquid state. This so-called plunge freezing technique involved freezing in liquid ethane at the temperature of liquid nitrogen. This was developed by Jacques Dubouchet and his colleagues. New detectors were developed by Richard and his collaborators and computational methods for analyzing thousands of single particle images to produce a three-dimensional structure was the work of Joachim Frank. It took these three components to come together to, to develop the Richard's vision of high resolution protein structures using cryo EM. In 1990, Richard published the high resolution structure of bacterial rhodopsin using cryo EM. This structure was used all over the world as a receptor model for the discovery of new medicines. Richard wrote a review at the time in which he proposed that single particle cryo electron microscopy could be a major advance in the structure determination of non crystalline protein. As he went to conferences to talk about his work, it soon became apparent that he was threatening the position of protein crystallographers who used X-rays to determine their structures. Gradually, manufacturers produced commercial instruments for cryo-EM. In October 2017, a conference was held to celebrate the inauguration of the Midlands cryo-EM cryo facility in the Henry Wellcome Building here at the University of Leicester. Richard received a phone call on his mobile phone during a presentation. He didn't take the call immediately, as he did not want to interrupt the session. But afterwards, he discovered that the call was from the Nobel Committee for Chemistry in Stockholm, and it was notification that he had won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry for 2017 with Dubouchet and Frank. Nobel Prizes are given for inventions which are a step change in science where things are never quite the same in the field of research. 
cryo-electron microscopy is just exactly such a discovery. Just as the inventor Thomas Edison developed the light bulb, for all of us to throw light on whatever we want to see, so the work of Richard Henderson has enabled us to see the structure of a wider range of proteins, enabling us to understand structure and function. The technique is now used all over the world and has revolutionized structural biology in academic study and drug discovery. Richard has also helped to fund a startup company called Heptaris Therapeutics, which started in 2007 and now employs 130 people. None of the new drugs that they have developed has yet reached the clinic, but watch this space. Richard started work at the LMB in Cambridge in 1973, and he was director from 1996 to 2000, 2006. He, he has received a long list of awards, including Fellow of the Royal Society in 1983, the, Krems, the Krebs model from the Federation of European Biochemical Societies in 1984, Foreign Associate of, Uni of the U.S. Academy of Sciences and the Copley Medal of the Royal Society in 2016. In the Queen's Birthday Honours in 2018, Richard was made a Companion of Honour. Richard has strong contacts with the University of Leicester, where he is Chair of the Leicester Institute of Structural and Chemical Biology Advisory Board. We have a cryo cryogenic EM facility headed by Professor John Schwabe and Dr. Christos Salve, a former co-worker of Richard. Mr. Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and Council, I present Richard Henderson so that you may confer upon him the honorary degree of Doctor of Science. very much like to thank Leicester University for awarding me this honorary degree, which has involved the least amount of work that I've done for any degree that I've had in the past. Um, Leicester has a strong record in structural biology. I remember uh, in the 1970s when Bill Shaw, who died a year ago, and Peter Moody worked on an enzyme called chloramphenicol acetyl transferase, which is a key enzyme responsible for antibiotic resistance. So this was translating structural biology into something that would be valuable in the world. Then, a little later, Gordon Roberts built up a second angle on structural biology, building up a powerful nuclear magnetic resonance structure group uh, here in Leicester, again working on enzyme structure and mechanism. And then, most recently, uh, in this Leicester Institute of Structural and Chemical Biology, John Schwabe has led the uh, expansion of structural biology to include electron cryomicroscopy, which is the thing that I switched into from X-ray crystallography to electron microscopy many years ago. So I'm delighted to be here, partly in support of these new initiatives. So. Uh, Looking back a little while, when I was an undergraduate in Edinburgh, graduating, 1966, so at the same stage in life that many of you are here today, uh, one of the exam questions was meant to be not too serious, and we were asked to write an essay on time. I suspect they were thinking of relativistic time because I was a physics graduate, but I wrote a little essay saying time consisted of the past, the present, and the future, and that the past and present was quite interesting, but we knew a lot about it, but the future was the key thing. And so looking forward from a graduation day, that's a, a careful thought about the future, is a key activity. And so uh, what continues to surprise me, the pace of knowledge advance, partly as the population, human population of the world is increasing, but partly because more people are involved in analytical procedures, scientific research, and so on. Um, the pace of development of knowledge is faster than ever. 
And so looking back 50 years to my graduation, I could not have imagined that we'd be here in 2019 with the genome and DNA sequences of most plants and animals already available. Uh, several hundred thousand UK citizens have had their DNA genome sequenced. This is helping to progress medical science. And then uh, looking back even further, the methods that we use in structural biology, electron microscopy, x-ray diffraction, the existence of electrons and x-rays weren't known in 1895 until x-rays were discovered or named by, by Rontgen and the electron by J.J. Thompson. So looking back, it is amazing how much the progress has been. So now looking forward for the next 100 years, it's clear the pace of development is, is, is even faster. So for those graduating today and thinking of the next 100 years, you all have a very long and bright future ahead. So thank you for, for listening.